I just want to make an observation, and that is that Yosef seems to have matured tremendously from the beginning of the Parsha to the end of the Parsha. And I think it's important for us to trace this maturation and what, what experiences that Yosef had in his life that made him grow up. Because at the beginning of the Parsha, we learned that was Vuhu Na'ar, that he was just a young man. And, the, and as young men are wont to do, they're really focused on their own lives and their own selves, right? Um, as a matter of fact, if we, were, if we wanted to define what really defines a person, what, what makes you an adult, right? And so if you, if you have teenage children in the house, that's probably a question that you're asking yourself constantly. What, at what point has your, has your son or daughter become an adult? And the answer is, is when they're no longer focused on self, when, no, when they're no longer consumed by their own self-importance in their own lives and are able to really look at other people and say they're more important, their, their needs take priority over my own. That's truly a sign of maturity. And Yosef seems to have been a Na'ar at the beginning of the Parsha, and yet by the end of the Parsha, when he gets thrown into prison, it says in the, in the Torah, Vayhi Hashem es Yosef, that God was with Yosef, Vayet Elov Chesed, and Hashem placed this comeliness upon him so that he would, he would be the source of kindness, or people would take kindly to him. That God placed his comeliness in the eyes of the, of the warden of the prison. And as a result, that as a result, the warden placed Yosef in charge of all of the prisoners. And everything that they did, he would do. In other words, it sounds like he was in charge. But we'll see that there's another meaning to that, like the Or HaChaim explains. Let's take a look at the Or HaChaim. What does it mean? That everything that they did, everything that the prisoners did, that's what Yosef did as well. So it explains the Or HaChaim HaKadosh, Targum Pirei, Targum Pirei Al Memre, that the Targum, the Targum, uh, Targum Unculus explains, that basically whatever Yosef would say that people should do, they did. Basically what the, the Targum says is that Yosef was in charge of everyone. And he made the rules for the prison. However, the Orachayim says, I'm bothered with that because Then why doesn't the Pusik say that directly? That why doesn't the Pusik simply say that everyone acted upon Yosef's command? But it doesn't say that. It says that everything that Yosef, that everything that they did, Yosef would also do. It's very possible that the reason why the Pusik speaks in this aberrant fashion is Lahudia Gamkein, Shahagam Shahayahu Hamanhig, that despite the fact that Yosef was the, 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 the boss, sort of, of the prison, Lohaya Misnaheg Bisirara, he did not. Um, act in a very forceful leadership role. And, and as a result, he did not refrain from participating in everything, all the other activities that the other prisoners were doing. That he did everything, everything that everyone else was doing. In other words, if everyone else was breaking rocks in the quarry, Yosef was also together with them breaking rocks in the quarry. If everyone else was painting license plates in prison, so Yosef was also painting license plates. V'zeyagid mizet tivo, mezeg tivo rather, ki tovhu, umatzachem v'seichel tov b'nei Hashem v'adam. And that actually is, is descriptive, therefore, in the Pasuk, it, when it says, the chol asher osim sham hu haya oseh, that everything that they did, Yosef also did, is descriptive of a certain kind of chen, that Yosef had. Why did he have the chain? Because he didn't hold himself holier than thou. He didn't hold himself as being more chashuv, more important than everyone else. He was one of the guys, and that's why people appreciated him, and therefore he was able to accomplish the, whatever, whatever he needed to accomplish as far as giving instructions to the prisoners. They listened to him. And, and furthermore, we find another passage <coughs> which also describes Yosef in, 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 in complementary terms in, as far as his conduct in the prison. And it says, That um, that Yosef uh, was put into, into prison together with 
the wine steward and the baker, and it says that Yosef served them, Vayesharis Osam. Yosef actually served his fellow prisoners that he was with in the prison, and as the Nixiv explains, he was placed in a special cell for dignitary prisoners, for prisoners who were used to uh, being, uh, having high levels of, um, of, um, of, of uh, high-level posts. And this episode takes place after he gets thrown into prison because of the, you know, the, the story with Potiphar's wife. And they were there together in the jail together. And uh, if you take a look at the Nitziv, he says, Vayesharis Osam. He says, Me atzmo shereit otam. That Yosef did this of his own volition. No one was compelling him because they were all equals in the prison. So what brought Yosef to this sense of servility where he felt, you know, let me go ahead and take care of their needs. And he says something amazing. He says, Kederach midat Yisrael lahashpil et atzmam lifnei sarei umot ha'olam. He says, this is a very Jewish trait that Jews have tended throughout history when we're in the Gola, when we're in the diaspora, to humble ourselves in front of non-Jewish dignitaries. And when we see that something needs to get done, when we find either a high-ranking politician or some other official, and we see that they need some help, we're usually the first ones to roll up our sleeves. And to recognize that a person of that person's stature, they would sort of need the following in order to be able to feel comfortable. There's no one else around, so I might as well be the one to do it. It's interesting because Paro in Egypt in the next couple of generations would recognize that quality about Jewish people. They recognize that we have this very strong volunteer spirit that we want to be able to we're, we're, we're people pleasers. We want to be able to serve others. We want to be able to take care of other people. We, uh, and so therefore, Paro exploited that. And when it came time to enlisting the Jewish people to be the volunteers, so to speak, for to build up Egypt, the Jewish people were the first ones to get up on to get online. What's important to know is that this is not this is we're not uh, being critical of that. This is actually a compliment that the Nitziv is paying to Yosef that this was a typically Jewish trait to be able to step forward and to be able to serve others. And so it bothered me, where did Yosef get this from? I mean, if Yosef was the spoiled favorite child of, uh, of Yaakov, and he was always held up to be the, 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 the prince of the children of Yaakov Avinu, so where did he get this trait to always want to help other people? You would think just the opposite, you know. If, if, if I'm Yosef, everyone should be coming to me. I'm the most, I'm the most important. I'm Rachel's son. I'm the one that's the most important of the sons of Yaakov Avinu. I'm royalty. And shouldn't he, had, shouldn't he have held himself in that great esteem? Well, for one thing, it could be that all of these experiences that Yosef went through were carefully choreographed by HaKadosh Baruch Hu to bring him to that state of recognition that you're not, you're not the hotshot that you thought you were and that if you really are going to be the greatest of the sons of Yaakov, it is only by ministering unto others and making sure that you are taking care of the other. That is the true sign of greatness. As a matter of fact, when we read in the Torah, when God introduces the Torah to the Jewish people in Parshish Yisrael, He says, Vatem li mamleches kohanim. You will be to me a kingdom of priests. And that in itself is an oxymoron, because a priest is he who ministers to others, and Mamleches, a kingdom, is that you will be kings. So how can a person be both a king and a Kohen? That's, there's, there's something contradictory there. A king is someone who is served by his subjects, and a Kohen is someone who ministers unto others. And so that's what the Torah itself is teaching us, is that the Jewish people become royalty. We become the royal people by taking the mantle of responsibility towards servicing others. And it was also that experience that Yosef had when Yaakov, at, at the earlier stage, before Yosef was sold into slavery, what does Yaakov tell Yosef to do? He says, Lech es shalom achecha es shalom davar. Go out and see how your brothers are doing. And let me know. Let me know. So why does Yaakov send Yosef out to that task, even though there may be peril on the road, and even though he knows that there's animosity between the brothers and Yosef. It's specifically because Yaakov wants to train Yosef to understand what it means to be a public servant, to, to, if you are going to be that great leader, 
it means helping your brother. And so it was necessary for Yosef to actually enunciate those words that the man, the angel who finds him uh, uh, straying on the path and says, what are you looking for? It was necessary for Yosef to say those fateful words that should be in the mouths of every Jew. As Achai Anochi Mevakesh, I seek my brethren. Hagidan Ali please tell me where I can find them, where they're grazing. Because a Jew has to always say, As Achai Anochi Mevakesh, I seek out my brethren. And that is the key to being the leader of the Jewish people, to be, to be able to seek out the welfare of others. And I believe that it goes even further back. I think that that was really the objective that Yaakov Avinu had when he made Yosef the Kasonis Pasim, the coat of many colors. What was Yaakov's intention in making Yosef this, this kind of very uh, unique and unusual exotic coat? Of course he wanted to allude to Yosef, Yosef, you're destined for greatness. But the idea that it was woven into many different colors, I think, is also a lesson that life is full of many circumstances and conditions. Life is very multifaceted. You're going to encounter a number of different experiences in life. And each experience in life is going to be another opportunity to show your leadership. Learn how to adapt to new situations. Be versatile and welcome change. And if you have that kind of humble spirit, you'll truly be a leader. If you take a look at the Midrash, uh, on the Pasuk, uh, which is below the Nitzv, it says, That Yisrael loves Yosef, and he makes him this coat of many colors. So the question is, what does the word Pasim mean? We always translate it as a coat of many, to of, of many colors. But one of the interpretations of the Midrash is Pasim, Shahita Maga'at Ad Pasyado, that the sleeves of this Ketonet Pasim were like this that they went to the palms of the hand. So when you would be, when, you, when Yosef put on the coat, so it went, the palms, it went down to the palms, right? So the question is, was this just a poorly tailored garment? I mean, what was the, <laughs> what was, what is the Medrash trying to tell us? That the, that the sleeves went down to the palms of his hand. What, uh, what's the point? And perhaps one of the things that Yaakov was trying to teach Yosef was again, this idea of humility. But don't think it's your hands that are going to be responsible for the things that you're able to accomplish in life. Sometimes you have to know that uh, your hands are covered because things are going to happen to you in life and you have to be able to roll with them and understand what it means to be, uh, to be a, humble, a humble individual. And realize that Hashem is watching over you and He'll just determine how successful you are. And also realize that you shouldn't be a grubber trying to use your hands to constantly grab and take in things. Let your hands be at rest. And, let, and, and be there to help others. Um, your, your hands are not meant to taking. And I think then you take a look at the next opinion of the Medrash, Dover Acher says the Medrash, Hasim shahaita daka v'kala v'yoter menet bepas yad. Another interpretation of the word pasim was that it was an extremely fine fabric. The fabric of the Ketonis pasim was so thin that you could fold it up and it would fit, the whole garment would fit in the palm of your hand. This was the original travel, travel garment. <laughs> you know, like that's a, uh, what? Like a silk. It was like silk, yeah. It was, but it was so fine that you could fold it up, you know, if you're traveling lightly. So what's, what's the objective of the Midrash here? What is Yaakov alluding to Yosef? That you should be ready to pick up at the moments, at a moment's notice and be ready to move. And that life is going to be sending you different, into, uh, different experiences in your life. And so you better travel light. The life's going to take you into, and give you new experiences as well. Another lesson in, in humility. Um, if you also take a look, there's a chizkuni at the bottom of your sheet. which tells us another interpretation of what the word pasim means. He says, davar acher, lashon piyus. The word pasim comes from the word appeasement. That Yaakov was telling Yosef that perhaps in, the, in, to, in order to succeed in this world, when you're dealing with powerful people, is not to lord over them, but to be mefayes, to be, to be conciliatory. Use the multi multiple opportunities that you're going to have in life and you're going to meet a lot of different people and you're going to encounter a lot of new experiences and sometimes they may be frustrating 
that you should have a good disposition and trust Hashem that everything will be okay and you'll eventually rise to the top because if you have that kind of attitude in life where you're prepared to encounter new experiences, you're prepared to move around and travel a lot, and you take everything in stride, then Hashem will make people like you because you'll be a likable person. You'll be adaptable. You'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to adapt to all the new experiences. It's like, you know, I remember um, you know, reading, in the, uh, reading or listening to the radio and hearing about all of the hassles of traveling on, on Thanksgiving weekend. You know, especially if you have to fly, you have to go through all the, what is it, is it called TSA in Canada too? Right, the, 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 the security lines and the, and the tremendous hassle and invariably you always get someone on the radio who says they had the worst experience in their life going through the security and the person was rude and they made them do this and they made them do that. And, um, you know, when you hear something like that, I think the proper attitude is, and I had this experience once, that I, I just, on the way to the airport, I had heard this news report about how TSA were treating people very cruelly and how they're getting up frustrated and people are getting frustrated. So you have to make a point of going over to the TSA person, the security person, and saying, hi, how are you? Happy Thanksgiving. Are you going to be able to have turkey with your family? You start, you know, and in that way, instead of being aggressive and forceful, that's what the Kasanas Pasim was, that's what Yaakov was trying to teach Yosef, is take, use this as an opportunity when you, when you get into, into experiences with difficult, potentially difficult people, especially we know the people at the border, uh, the border, <laughs> the border people I've discovered, I've met many of them. <laughs> lovely, lovely people. <laughs> but I'm sure they're very nice outside of when they take off their uniform. So the objective is to try and be friendly with them, even, even, when, they're, even when they act like the prison warden. The reason why Yosef was so liked was because he understood, he took that lesson from his father. You have to be versatile, you have to be ready to adapt to change, and you have to make sure that you, know, that you, uh, you welcome these kinds of changes in your life. So uh, life is a coat of many colors. Sometimes we've got to learn to take it off and put it in our back pocket so that we can be ready to travel when the time comes. Other times we've got to learn to roll up our sleeves and be ready to work. But the important thing is to look for opportunities to try our best, uh, to try our best to see those opportunities when they present themselves. And in that way we can bring tremendous light to the world and we, can, and we can really make a Kiddush Hashem wherever we go. And I think that's one of the lessons that we're supposed to learn from Yosef, uh, especially in this week's Parsha, when we see him developing from a Na'ar into a really, really mature adult. Any, uh, any questions? Any ideas, comments? Yes. I actually have a suggestion. I think we learn it from his father, but actually the ability to do it, we learn from his mother, from Rachel. And yes, tell me how we learned because, it from Rachel. Because Rachel <coughs> was a personality who could feel Yaakov at Ishtar, simple truth. He see what he see and if he actually tells it back to you, straightforward. He tells his own wife, you know, you don't have children, I have children, I'm not a god. He's very, very straightforward. Rachel feels another person. She feels the possible of the shame of her sister. She hides the smoking of his father. She's a very sensitive person. Mm -hmm. Understanding, feeling another person. Ah, okay. So, you know? yes, that stands to reason that he probably did get a lot from his mother as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. That's a nice idea. But I think Jakob learned from her too. <coughs> he suggested to his son. Absolutely, no doubt.